Hello there, Drew Hannish Whiskey Lore, and time for another whiskey tasting. Heading to the Western Isles of Scotland, and I love for today's tasting a flagship whiskey from a distillery that, I'm going to say it, I believe that this distillery within the next two, three, four years will be elevated to a point where I put them right alongside Brooklade in terms of what they're doing. Because when I went there and did the tastings, I was just amazed by the quality of the different whiskeys that, they, um, that they're producing there at the moment. And the distillery is Kilhoman, and this is Macure Bay, which is their flagship whiskey. Now, I have a friend of mine that we traded, I don't remember what I traded to get this from him, but I was a big fan of Sonic, which is their really heavy sherry-influenced expression. This one, non-age stated, it is slightly influenced by a sherry barrel, but not as much as the Sonic is. And it's interesting because he actually yesterday did a blind tasting for me and he'd just grab something out of my cabinet and pour it in a glass and see if I can figure out where it came from and if I can identify the whiskey. I could not identify this one. And... I identified it to the point that I knew it was Isla, but I could not tell you which distillery it was. And I've got enough Isla bottles in my cabinet that it, it could create some confusion and some of them being somewhat close to each other. So when I started to nose this thing, what was throwing me was that this had so much more of a medicinal character than I remember a Kilhoman having. And this is why it's good to every once in a while reset yourself and have somebody just grab something out of your cabinet, pour you a dram, and let you kind of guess at it. Because this is one of those whiskeys that I thought I had a pretty solid opinion of. And then when I did that tasting yesterday, I was reaching. I'm going, well, this definitely is not Corey Vrecken, but it has some Ardbeg characteristics. It's got a little bit of an ashy note to it, but it's not overly aggressive. Then it also has a little bit of a, um, what I would say would be that very sort of TCP, um, by the way, TCP, if you don't know what that is, it's an antiseptic that um, has a very distinctive smell to it. And I, you'll hear that a lot more over in Scotland, the use of TCP, or they'll talk about a medicinal smelling whiskey. And so I get that out of this whiskey as well. And then a minerally note on top of that, that I think in the past I didn't necessarily identify, but it was one of those things that as I nosed it, I was thinking there's something about this that I just can't describe. And the more I've been around those minerally kind of whiskeys, the more it is now becoming apparent to me what that scent is. And then there's a brininess to this as well. So it feels a little bit like it's got some Laphroaig characteristics going on, but it does not taste like a Laphroaig. And it doesn't necessarily smell. It doesn't have that distinctive Laphroaig scent to it, that kind of seaweedy thing going on. So it really did baffle me as to what I was nosing. And so today I came back to it. And now all those things are coming clear to me all of a sudden. There's also a little bit of an orchard fruit note that is coming through on this as well. And um, the other thing that threw me was I looked at the color, and that is a very light whiskey. This has been aged in a first fill bourbon barrel, estimated around six years, but it spends in there before it then moves over into an Oloroso sherry butt for a short period of time. So in a way, this kind of goes into the world of like a wee beastie. It's not that old of a whiskey, yet it isn't as aggressive as wee beastie is. A lot of people, you know, have a nice opinion of this whiskey that this is a polished and really nice tasting whiskey. So take that, right? It's all in what you're looking for. And for me, Younger Pete is okay. I mean, it... It can get overly aggressive depending on the distillate, but some really nice distillate here. So, but my feeling is of the stuff that I've been nosing and tasting, this is probably my least favorite, yet 
I think it's something that really holds up and at around 50, $55 a bottle, it's also somewhat of a bargain if you want to jump into that range. And so it's priced right in that wee beastie range as well. In terms of on the palette, there's a nice sweetness that comes in here and it's not overly sweet but it is a, like a lemon custard that comes in and then you're left with that sort of medicinal quality and that smoke and it lays on your palate and then there's like this little toffee note maybe that lemon custard you feel like your mouth is coated a little bit it's got a nice mouthfeel to it. I think that's the other thing that really draws me to this whiskey. And, um, but that citrus stands out and a nice pepper note that keeps a nice heat. Like, um, you know, if you get a, a bag of chips or something that kind of has a, a peppercorn kind of flavor to it and you keep feeling that heat on your palate, that is the kind of thing that I get out of this. And it works really nicely along with the smoke, with that lemon custard going on as well, and the medicinal qualities. It's a really nice balance. And I don't know that I would suggest this to somebody who has never had a peated whiskey before. I still think going with a Port Charlotte heavily peated is probably the best direction to go because you get more of a barbecue smoke out of that and that can be more familiar to people. And it's made with barley that comes from inland. This is coming from Rockside Farm, which is used to be a farm that was uh, had its grain sourced by Brooklade, but now it is 100% Kilhomans. And so you're getting barley that is grown on this farm and that is providing some of that medicinal character as well from the soil that is growing this barley. So as I say, I feel like this is a distillery to watch out for because people love Isla whiskeys, but Kilhoman, you know, they're in that experimental area as well, and a farm distillery, everything is happening right there. So you're getting a chance to really taste the, what Isla is like. Whereas with Brucolade, you have some whiskeys that are Isla barley, but then you have others that have barley coming from Orkney or coming from around Inverness and that area further inland. So. Anyway, I am a fan of them, and um, I wonder what you're thinking about them. Have you have you tasted some Kilhomans that you really like? What are your favorites? What do you think of Mercure Bay? Love to hear your thoughts below. And um, I'm gonna go upstairs and work on a press release. <laughs> I gotta I gotta get people knowing about the Lost History of Tennessee whiskey. It is now on Apple Books finally as an audio book. And it is also on uh, Spotify and some other places. Plus, of course, the book is on sale as well. Have yourself a great day. Until next time, cheers and slan mm. Nice.